All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. All right, now today, you're going to love this one. It's going to scare the shit out of you. All right, so uh, if you guys have been paying any attention to current events, China has been doing a lot of saber rattling for the past three years, maybe five, depending upon uh, what, you know, what you consider... Uh, Sable rat, saber rattling. Uh, Russia is stacking on the uh, border with Ukraine. We have a president in the office. In my opinion, should not be there uh, because of a uh, tainted ice cream social and uh, a bunch of ice cream cones that were delivered. Uh, you know, between one and four in the morning. And uh, you know, what are you, what, what are you gonna do? Uh, that on top of the fact that, uh, you know, we have a lot of division here in this country, a lot of infighting, and uh, a lot of it is being brought up from offenses that are way in the past that uh, nobody was alive to incur or do. All right, now with that being said, when you think about nuclear weapons, you probably think about Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know, or uh, some of the other uh, test blasts from the 40s and 50s and 60s that they did out in the desert in the United States. They also detonated a whole ass load, uh, I believe, on the Bikini Atoll out there in the Pacific Ocean, which is horrifically tainted to this day, you know, f was it 50, 60 years later? We heard the news that China has a hypersonic missile. Hypersonic missiles have been around forever. The old term was ICBM. All right, typically, if you're on the other side of the planet, you launch an ICBM, it'll be splashing down in between 15 and 40 minutes later, depending upon a, you know, a bunch of different factors. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the average person out there realizes that a nuke has the blast wave, the heat wave, and the radiation, all right, in, in the form of gamma, x-ray, and uh, basically neutrons. All right, this is not a, a joking matter. Um, if we see nuclear warheads flying around, you can pretty much kiss this civilization goodbye for a long time. And uh, if it's bad enough, we are not going to recover from it. All right. Now, a lot of like, oh, pop, it never happened. Blah. Listen. A story of greed, serial matrimony, international intrigue, unregulated human experiments. Sleazy infomercial producers, a skeet shooting, neutral loaf loving rebel chemist, and a murderous, perpetually intoxicated Irish German mixologist slash retired Ornpay star. If that didn't get your attention, nothing will. Buy the cure now. A link is in the description. We've got Russia, which took an, uh, just a bath after the Communist Party fell. They collapsed, and they're chomping at the bit to get back to where they once were. Unfortunately, the satellite Soviet states that made the Soviet Union what it was are gone now, and they need to try to recapture those one at a time, which they're trying with Ukraine. China, that's a whole other animal. Uh, historically, they have been the victims of other uh, countries that had stronger navies around them, and you know, I guess they're trying to increase their navy, their nuclear subs, and uh, take over that portion of the ocean that touches their country. Uh, they're basically threatening all of the countries around them to include India and Japan, Australia, and a lot of the other smaller ones. Um, so let's just say it's just going to be fucking ugly. Now... We do have very good defenses, but if they start hurling hundreds of warheads around in all kinds of different packages, missiles, hypersonic missiles, 
artillery rounds, new, subs, what have you, a certain percentage of those are going to hit their mark. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this, what is this one here? Let me see what we got going on. Hang on a minute. There it is. This is New York City. All right. Now, I do not like New York. I don't like the politics. They have been corrupt since the beginning. But they're still United States citizens. Part of this country. And I do not want to see millions of people go up in smoke. All right, so we're going to go here. All right, this is the smallest little boy. This is a 15 kiloton yield missile here. All right, so we're going to detonate this dead center over New York. This is the first atomic bomb used. All right. So this middle part here, everything in that area is pulverized to radioactive dust and slag. All right, out here, blast wave radiation, what have you. And right here is the blast effects, and then you have the heat. All right, now you can see here, this, this is the smallest warhead that we've used in war. Okay, it's 157 foral, 8 fatalities, with 297, 699 injured. All right, now what they're, you're not getting here is everyone in this area here more than likely are going to die within 1 to 30 days. All right, now let's just ramp this up a little bit and let's just give it an average size of, let's say, a 300 kiloton U.S. Arsenal Minuteman 3 missile. All right, I don't know the size of the average Russian and Chinese warheads, but I'm going to assume they're somewhere in this range since we're all in the same, uh, basically, technolo uh, technological innovation brackets for the most part. All right, so this is getting detonated here. All right, so you can see this is way worse. 818, or let's just round it up, 819,000 people die in this blast. It's a, almost a million people. And you get a, over a million people injured, and 50 to 70% of them will be dead within one to 30 days. Now, I'm not even going into the fallout and the radiation sickness and all of the fun and games that goes along with this after the fact. This is very, very fucked up. This is not a game. This is like world-ending shit here. So pay attention. Now, we're going to bump this up one more. Okay, All right, Tsar Bomba, which supposedly is the biggest warhead used by the USSR. That's 50 megatons. All right, they, they say it can go up to 300 megatons. All right, now check take a look at this shit here. This is the 50 megaton bomb. All right, we're going to detonate this. Boom. All right. All of New York is gone. All right. That's six million five hundred thousand people instantly killed. With almost well, let's just round up four million injured, which fifty to seventy percent of these people will be dead within one to thirty days after the blast. So a bomb the size of Tsar Bomba will pretty much kill everything in this radius. All right, and I'm not even going to count the fallout. I mean, we're talking probably 20 million people gone in a month. Maybe 45 days. All right. This is some scary motherfucking shit. All right, in my opinion, we're probably... A, no, we're not probably. We are closer to a nuclear exchange now, in my opinion, than we were over the Cuban Missile Crisis.
I'm going to go over here and we're going to go through a declassified map of nuclear targets that we had uh, either identified for ourselves or we found out, you know, after the fact, after the Soviet Union fell. All right. So these are all of the nuclear targets that were basically inputted into the Russian database and our databases. Now you will see here, Italy is not really targeted. France is not really targeted. Spain, you know, it's this is pretty much just Europe. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you this right now. If this kicks off, Europe is gone, all right? China is probably gone as well. You know, and for good measure, you're going to probably see uh, Israel and the Middle East get just removed from the map and be uninhabitable for the next thousand years. This is definitely going to change all of human history, if not remove us from the planet. Okay, now this is basic uh, effects of a nuclear weapon. All right. The ground zero refers to the point of Earth's surface immediately below or above the point of detonation. If you're ground zero, you are gone. You're dead. All right. During Hiroshima, they found shadows of people that were at ground zero. They were literally vaporized instantaneously by the heat and power of these explosions. All right. And the most dangerous nuclear warheads are airbursts. Okay, one's one that hits the ground will be more uh, be a, basically a lot more dirty because it'll irradiate a lot of the soil and then throw it into the air. And what you don't get in initial blast effects, you're going to get in fallout and uh, basically contaminating the earth around that explosion for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. All right, this is blast effects. Blast effects comes from the shock wave and heat. Uh, you can watch all kinds of old uh, 1950, 1960 footage of nuclear blasts and tests that took place, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, thermal radiation effects. 35%, basically a third of all of the energy created by nuclear explosion is thermal radiation, i.e. heat. All right, if you are so close to the blast, will you see the flash? Chances are you have received a lethal dose of radiation and um, you're going to be cooked and booked a few seconds after you see that flash. Because, you know, once that happens, once they detonate that thing, it, it is on like Donkey Kong. There's no going back. All right, direct nuclear radiation effects. All right, this is anyone that's within the radius of the intense flash. It all depends upon, uh, you know, if it's a hydrogen bomb, a nuclear bomb, what have you. We've already talked about the fallout. This is basically Earth underneath the blast that's irradiated and thrown into the atmosphere. And, uh, you know, if you are caught in the fallout, you know, I'm just going to tell you right now, your life it's your life expectancy is going to go way down. All right. This is no joke. I'm trying to be upfront with you guys so you guys know the deal. Let's see what we got here. Do -do, we already covered that one. All right, here we go. Now, while I was in the military and special forces, we did some rehearsals with mock-ups of man pack nukes. They're not that big. They're about uh, the size of a uh, tactical nuke, which is a Davy Crockett mortar type thing they came up with in the late 50s, mid 60s. All right. Uh, weighs about 57 pounds. Uh, it's contained inside a rucksack. And you jump in with it or you carry it on your back, deposit it, and try to get the hell out of Dodge. Now, I'm going to be honest, when I was going through this training, they basically told us that uh, 
the man pack knew if you're on one of those teams, you're probably not going to survive. One, because you have to set the timer and then get the hell away from it. And if you are in the verge or possibly uh, going to be compromised or captured, it can be remote detonated, which means you don't even know what's going on. You're there one second and then the next you're somewhere else. Okay, and uh, I think they still have some of these in the inventory. I'm not sure. I'm not privy to this information. I'm just, oh, here it goes. It was 59 pounds, not 57. Enclosed in aluminum and fiberglass casing. Special backpack harness towed across snow landscape or parachute into enemy territory. All right, this is absolutely insane. All right, see that right there? That's the Davy Crockett Warhead. One kiloton. Now, I don't know why they would need this, but, you know, hell, I'm not one of those 30-pound brains doing all the thinking up at the Pentagon, so I don't fucking know. I'm just telling you the deal. All right, this is the nuclear weapons of China. Now, China is now starting to pick up steam in the nuclear warhead market. Uh, they are building a bunch of new silos. They're estimated to have anywhere from 225 to 350 nuclear warheads. Okay, they have nuclear missiles. They have hypersonic missiles. They have nuclear submarines. This is a real deal shit here. All right, now this is from 2006. You'll see the numbers here. There's the launchers, number of missiles. These are estimates. Okay, the ones we need to worry about, the one here, the ICBM, ICBM, you know, 5,000, you know, 5,500 kilometers, 8,500 kilometers. Now, in reality, um, to, be, to play it safe, you could probably add 20 to 30% on top of this number to get actual range. All right. So this will royally fuck up our day, their day, everyone's day. Now these ones here, which are developmental, this was in 2006. I'm pretty sure they're not in development anymore. Sorry about that. Uh, now this is all basically stuff that's out, you know, open source. Well, here we go. Here's some more stuff. Oh, they have, uh, here we go. 3.3 megatons, 4 to 5 megatons. Okay, there's a lot of shit we don't even know about here. Whew. This is some scary ass shit. Let's see what we get here from Russia. All right, number of nukes that Russia has. They have approximately 6,400 nuclear warheads. And for a country well, that has the GDP of South Korea, they have approximately slightly over half of the world's nuclear arsenal. All right. That's bad. Now, I, I know that people, they've signed treaties and they're reducing. It doesn't fucking matter. All it really takes is six to ten warheads to get through our defenses and this country is crippled for decades. Same thing for China, Russia. If Russia gets hit, they are not going to recover. They do not have the GDP for that. All right? This is going to be a game changer for the entire planet. All right, so we got here. All right, now this is from June 29th, 2021. All right, they're saying it. This is Washington Post. Don't panic about China's new nuclear capabilities. All right. You are full of shit. We should be extremely concerned about China's nuclear capabilities. Now, they've gone on the record and stated they are not going to be the first to ever push the button and launch a nuke. Yeah, right. As soon as they get into trouble, they're gonna they're gonna flip the switch. 
Because if they bring their Navy out to start doing war ops on Taiwan, and they take any casualties, no, I shouldn't say whatsoever, but if they take a significant amount of casualties, lose a bunch of ships, that's what's going to happen next. You can pretty much see Taiwan go up in smoke. Japan will probably take one or two. It'll be ugly. All right, now I'm not going to go through this entire article. You can read it for yourself. It's, you know, you can simply go to the Washington, uh, the Washington Post. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit of acute radiation syndrome, a fact sheet for clinicians. There's a whole brochure on this. All right, now, when I went through NBC training when I was in the military, everything was in RADS. They have some other kind of scale now. I'm just going to use RADS here. Okay. If you get hit with 70 RADS, you're dead. All right. And it says here the dose usually must be external. Listen, if you get exposed to radiation, if it's internal, it's even worse. You done. Okay, and this uh, it has to be a high energy kind of radiation, which is X ray, gamma rays, and neutrons um, that do all the damage. A significant portion of your body. Okay, if you're in the in the blast zone of a nuclear warhead, your entire body is going to be exposed to radiation. There's really nothing you can do about it. All right, you can limit it a little bit if you get in a bunker and you hunker down. But, you know, if it's a dirtier bomb, you're going to be in a radiation zone longer than you have food and water. You're, you're going to die. And if you leave to get out of there, more than likely, you're going to die. All right, now, they have... Th th this is incredibly insidious. You got, from the radiation, it's bone marrow syndrome. Or basically, uh, all of the uh, stem cells... And your bone marrow die and you stop producing basically blood and the blood that you have is rapidly dying due to radiation right and there's the gastrointestinal syndrome uh syndrome and this could happen from eating contaminating food or inhaling or swallowing dust that has been uh uh basically irradiated and this is a horrible slow painful death take up to two weeks here's a uh, cardiovascular or central nervous system this is a little quicker usually three days and basically the radiation has destroyed your uh, your heart cells and it is destroying your nervous system and since we are the robots we're trying to create it is going to kill you you're done all right, there's some more stuff in here. I'm not going to go into detail. You guys can look it up for yourself. CDC.gov. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not even, this is serious business. And I have no idea why our current uh, dictatorship isn't taking this more serious. Uh, I think it's because he's got a, a hand up his ass and he's nothing more than a overblown sock puppet. But what the hell do I know? All right, so now I've covered everything here. This is just a one, uh, 101 nuclear war briefing. All right. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. My gut is telling me, before we die, meaning in the next 30 years, for most of the people in my age bracket, we are going to see another nuclear warhead, a minimum of one possibly more used in anger all right this is going this is serious fucking business all right if this happens we are all fucked all right i'm sorry for scaring the shit out of you but i'm just giving you the truth i brought receipts you can look it up for yourself take it easy